let us see how to carry out the object oriented design. We have discussed about the procedural design and uh, now we look at the nitty gritty of object oriented design. For object oriented design, we will use UML as the notation. Let us uh, get started with that. Nowadays, object oriented design techniques have become extremely popular, used extensively. The initial work in object orientation was done in 1980s and now nearing maturity. There is widespread acceptance in industry and academics and uh, UML is the modeling language using which design is done stands for unified modeling language and that has become an ISO standard in 2004 and therefore, the object oriented design is much more standardized than the procedural design. Now, let us see how to go about developing the UML model, why do we develop a model UML model and then how do we get the design finally from the model. As the name says UML stands for unified modeling language and therefore, UML stands for unified modeling language and as uh, the name implies it is a modeling language. or we can say that it is a language, UML is a language using which we can document the model and the design. Uh, Let us be clear that UML is just a language, when we learn a language we can document things and it is not a design and development methodology. It is just a language, we need to learn the language and we will also discuss a methodology for designing and we will use UML as the language to document the design, but the design will obtain using a design methodology and we will use UML as a documentation for that design. One good thing about the UML is that it is independent of any design methodology. UML is uh, used for documenting the design, but the design can be obtained using any methodology, we can always document using UML. The UML, let us see how it uh, came about. As we were saying that the object oriented design was first used in 1980s and when the object oriented design came up, uh, different researchers they proposed different methodologies. There were a large number of methodologies for object oriented design in the 1980s and 90s and one thing about these methodologies is that each of them they use different notations and therefore, it became very difficult in companies or for the students, because uh, in a company there may be many projects and each project was maybe using different methodology, they are documenting the result in different notations and therefore, one project cannot really reuse or understand the design of another uh, team and it led to lot of confusion. It was felt that there needs to be a standardization and in the early 90s an attempt was made to standardize all these different design methodologies and notations 
and uh, those days the ones that were extremely popular were the OMT object modeling technique Iramba, books methodology by Grady book, object oriented software engineering by Jacobson, Odell's methodology by Odell, Slayer and Miller methodology and each of this methodology there was a design methodology and also there were very different notations. And when there was a effort to standardize these uh, methodologies, obviously they had to look at these methodologies and the notations that they were following and based on that the UML was proposed. As you can see in this diagram that uh, the notations for the UML have been borrowed largely from the OMT which was a extremely popular design technology having its own notations. Some of the notations are taken from books methodology, some of the notations are taken from the object oriented software engineering and some of the methodologies so, sorry some of the notations were not there in any of these methodologies and these are new. We look at all these notations as a part of our discussion on UML, uh, but then we must remember that most of the notations here are borrowed from some of the popular methodologies and it had of course, few of the notations on its own as we proceed we will point out from where these methodologies uh, sorry these uh, notations have been taken. The object management group it adopted uh, OMG, uh, OMG sorry the OMG adopted the UML the object management group adopted the UML in 1997 and OMG is an association of industries. It tries to promote consensus notation and techniques just to have uniformity standardization but this is not really a standardization body it can just adopt its own notation so that it become popular and ultimately need to lead to standardization. And once it was adopted by the OMG it became extremely popular and not only it is used extensively by the software development area, but also even domains which are entirely different they are also using UML notations. If we look at the development of UML, we can see that various methodologies were combined here and finally, the UML version 1 was released in 1997. So, there were a fragmentation of different methodologies in the 80s and 90s and towards the end of 90s these were unified into the unified modeling language. And then as these were being used there were uh, need for extensions to the UML. For example, to make it use in a particular domain may be some more notations are needed and so on. So, different versions of UML came up and finally, as these were applied to different domains uh, there were some shortcomings of the UML were noted. For example, it does not handle events, parallel processing and so on and uh, UML 2.0 was uh, released in the year 2004 and mainly to make it applicable to some domains of industry like embedded systems and so on. So, UML 1.0 released in 1997, it was a unification of various methodologies that existed and then it continued to evolve until 2003 the UML 2.0 version was released and even now it continues to evolve further. 
first thing let us understand before we discuss about UML modeling that why do we need a model. Also we need to answer the question is modeling the same as designing. If we remember in the early parts of our discussion we had said that models are actually an abstraction mechanism. Abstraction is necessary to simplify complex problems. We need to create an abstraction where we develop a simple model of a complex problem and then slowly we throw various hierarchies we have the entire problem modeled and then once we model this problem we can design from the model. So, model is a abstraction mechanism where we construct a very simple representation of the problem by ignoring different aspects of the complex problem and it is an effective mechanism to handle complexity. Typically we use a graphical modeling technique and this is called as the analysis model where we model the problem domain and once we come up with the analysis model we can convert it to a design model. So, to answer the question that is designing the same thing as modeling, yes design is a model, but all models are not designs. We can have analysis models which are just models of the problem and the model of the problem can be transformed into a design model which can be easily implemented. Now, let us see what are the diagrams that are used in UML because we said that UML is a language and it is a graphical language. In this graphical language we have different diagrams. We will see the graphical notations that is the vocabulary of the UML and how to construct the model. There are five views of a system and these views uh, provide uh, different perspectives of a uh, software. and then we develop these UML diagrams and then we transform it or refine it to get the actual design model and the implementation of the system. The five views of the system are the user's view, structural view, behavioral view, implementation view and the environmental view. The user's view is the one which says how does the customer or the user view the system. So, this is the external view. The structural view is a internal view of the software namely what are the classes, how are the classes related, what are the objects, object relations and so on. Whereas, the behavioral view it represents once a invocation or input from the user is obtained, which part of the internal structure they behave in what way and finally, produce the output. The implementation view, this discusses how are the different uh, elements of the internal structure organized and the environmental view says uh, it depicts how the different parts of the system, how are they deployed. If we represent that here, the user's view, this is the view of the user and it is represented in the form of a huge case diagram. We have drawn it at the center because this is the central view based on which other are developed, other views and other diagrams are developed. The user's view is the starting point because the user gives the requirements and uh, the requirements are modeled using a huge case diagram and based on this the other diagrams are developed other views and diagrams and that is why we have drawn this at the center. This is the central 
model of any software. The structural view are represented by the class diagram and the object diagram. The behavioral view through sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, state chart diagram and the activity diagram and the environmental view through deployment diagram. The implementation view through the component diagram. Now, let us see the structural diagrams. So, this consists of the class diagram which are set of classes and their relationships, the object diagrams which are set of objects and their relations, the component diagrams which are a logical grouping of elements and their relations, the deployment diagram which are where these are hosted. Now, the behavioral diagrams are the use case diagram the sequence diagram, collaboration diagram, the state chart diagram and the activity diagram. The use case diagram are the high level behavior of the system, the user goal, external entities, actors, whereas the sequence diagram it depicts the focus on how the messages are exchanged, 